What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba Memory. And if you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now, if you can't tell, we're here at the shop. It's our marina, it's our dive shop. A lot of you guys see it in our videos. Some of you guys have actually been here. We appreciate you coming by. But we have a salvage job to do today. The good news is we don't have to travel very far. Right there. It's about 60 feet away. We got one of our slip customers. His boat went down uh, yesterday. And so we're going to jump in the water, see if we can get it up for him. But before I do that, I want to give you a little heads up of what's to come. The ones that saw us on the Weather Channel's Deepwater Salvage, you're going to be seeing a lot more of us. We were just notified that season three has been renewed and we've been asked to come back as reoccurring cast members, which is super cool. So a lot of our salvage videos may start going by the wayside a little bit here on YouTube because we've got to be able to do some filming with the Weather Channel as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you don't have the Weather Channel app, go check it out. Not only can you get all the weather news, you can get some pretty cool shows like Deepwater Salvage as well. So definitely stay tuned for that in the future. But I'm going to run in here, put a dry suit on. We're going to jump in and get this boat out. All right, guys, so this would not be a Lee Hickory Scuba Salvage video if I didn't do some type of commentation. And I was gonna set up the green screen here behind me and just so it looked better for film, but it has been a very, very long day uh, after working on this vessel. Uh, I had to teach all day and then I had to go do another salvage uh, right before I closed up this evening. So I'm very, very tired. But I wanted to walk you through exactly what we're doing in this video. Cause like I said, we love making educational content here for you. And I'll give you a little fun fact about this vessel. This particular vessel um, is owned by one of our slip customers, but that slip customer is not just the normal slip customer to me. He is actually one of my diving mentors. He owns another local dive shop here in the area. And he is a gentleman who not only did I learn how to die from and my mom learned how to die from my dad learned how to die from, but so did my grandfather. And so he's the one that kind of got our family into diving. And uh, if you know the history of our family and, and the scuba industry and all that, you'll, you'll kind of see why this, this really touched home for me. But this uh, 25 foot uh, cutty cabin or uh, cabin cruiser, if you will, um, and it's sitting literally on the bottom, yet it's still not completely submerged. It's tied off to the dock. It's went down. Um, due to the recent hurricane that come through that area, the water is very low right now. And so uh, you're going to see we do things a little bit different on this vessel than we normally would. First of all, we didn't do any type of inspection dive like we normally do. Um, on this particular one, we are literally just hooking up, going to raise it up. Uh, one reason is we know this vessel. I have dove off this vessel more times than I can count. And, you know, he's on this vessel since the 90s. So uh, I've dove hundreds of dives off this particular vessel. So I know it like the back of my hand. Um, we are going to be using the stern eyes in, in the lift here. And we're just going to take two 2,000 pound bags, put one to each stern eye. So one on the port side, one on the starboard side and they're not really going to be doing much lift at all what their purpose is is just to stabilize that vessel and so um and we'll primarily be using it after we lift the vessel we're going to go ahead and put some air in them um however we're going to be doing all the lift on the starboard side to correct that vessel and then this is going to stabilize it now this particular vessel is also what's called a self belling hull and if you're not familiar with uh, boats and things like that so any water that comes inside the hole is just going to drain right out the back. It, it's it's a system that's set up so that your boat don't take on water and sink. I know this boat took on water and sink, sank, but that's basically the way the self uh, bell and hole does. Your hole's kind of sitting like this. All the water's going to run to the back and run right out the back. Um, so we're going to utilize that. Basically, we're going to put uh, a 1,000 pound bag over on the starboard side and the boat's sitting like this as we start to raise it up and that gunnel, the top part of the side of the boat comes out of the water. Basically, what's going to happen is all that water is just going to run right out um, the hole, holes in the back and that's going to help raise this boat as well. Um, and then, of course, we're going to be pumping water out of the cabin area and down in the lower part of the hole as well. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm actually hooking up the starboard side, um, 
bag to the stern eye as well. Uh, here in a minute, you're gonna see me put the main lift bag that we're gonna be using on a cleat. I do not recommend doing that. We're actually not putting that much lift on this vessel at all. Uh, this is the reason we chose to do it in this particular situation. And somebody's probably gonna ask, why didn't you just use your belly bands, throw them up underneath the boat, because the boat is turned, and get the bands underneath the vessel? Yeah, most definitely we could have. That's way, way too much work for this particular job. So it's so much easier just to use those attachment points. But you do want to be careful when you're using cleats and things like that. Because it doesn't take much to rip a cleat clean out of a fiberglass or a wood or something like that. This is a stern knot here. It's, it's meant to hold. It's meant to have strength. So we're going to go ahead and attach to it. And then, like I said, I'll swim over here in just a second. And I'm going to hook another lift bag, which is going to be the primary lifting bag. Um, to the midship cleat, which will be what corrects that vessel in the water. These back two bags are not really doing much lift. All they're doing is just gonna kind of stabilize it. Because as we lift this vessel, we don't want that water to shift and it roll the other way. So those two rear bags that you just saw us hook up, they're gonna hold that, that vessel stable once we get it up. All right. So here I'm hooking up the airline to the starboard side stern bag that we put on. Just making sure it's good and secure. All right, and then I'm gonna get the third bag thrown out to me. This is just a 1,000 pound lift. Um, I'm gonna be hooking it to, like I said, the midship cleat there and that's what's going to be providing the majority of the lift here now one thing that you will notice once i have this bag hooked up and we start the lift it's still pretty much out of the water um I, i'm standing up here it's not deep enough for really for me to to do much stuff underwater that's how shallow it is and that's another reason we chose to hook up in the areas that we did versus using the belly bands and all that Yep, so I'm going to go ahead and hook up. And this is what I was talking about earlier. You want to be careful. Uh, it doesn't take much force whatsoever to rip the, um, the cleat clean out of the side of the gunnel here. Typically, that's not going to be a really good place to hook up a bag. In this case, it, it worked out good for us. But Now that we got all the bags hooked up, we'll go ahead and secure this last airline here. And then uh, we're going to bring the... Um, the water pump in to go ahead and get it placed where we need it and then we will commence with the actual lifting of of the vessel itself and pumping the water out as well i gotta give it to my surface crew too we we've got the best crew of divers out there uh, we always work together as a team it, it's it's amazing how efficient we are doing jobs like this just because we work together as a team everybody has a job to do um, there you can see my dad, he's a bald headed guy. The other bald headed guy that's got the hat on, that's usually the diver that's in the water with me. That's instructor OMB, and uh, he's being a surface guy today. So that's what I meant by working together as a team. We all have a, an individual role that we must play or do while doing these jobs. And sometimes we have to change roles. In this case, OMB ended up not being a diver for us that day. He's a surface guy for us that day but we we all come together as a team we understand we all have the ultimate goal of getting this vessel up and keeping our divers safe and we truly work efficiently but now that we've got the water pumping yes somebody's gonna say but you're just pumping the lake into the lake yes we get that we haven't completed the lift yet we're just getting everything prepped ready to go so as soon as we do the lift uh it won't take very long for this vessel just to pop right up and you'll see that here in just a second we're going to put the last little bit of lift on that 1,000 pound bag and they're going to use their weight just to shift that vessel just enough so as soon as that gunnel comes out of the water the boat in itself is technically floating remember it's a self belling hole all the water is going to the back going through the holes or little holes there in the back Now at this point, 
part of the vessel is still on the bottom. It's kind of teeter-totting on the bottom because there's so much weight of water that's still in it. But um, once where the pump is, once that pump starts pulling out the water from inside the cabin area, you'll see that bow just pops right up, water runs straight to the back, the vessel is floating on her own. As you can see guys, we got the boat up. All, we, all that's left now is just pumping out the last remaining bit of water and of course getting it towed around, putting it on a trailer and brought out. We are gonna try to figure out what made it sink. We know water made it sink, but we need to figure out where that water's coming in at. We don't know if the village just burned out or what, but we're gonna check all that as well. We got our tow boat over here. We're gonna go ahead and get it hooked up, towed around, I'll show you some footage there and I'll kind of give you some final thoughts on this particular salvage. Now we got the vessel up, it's like I said, just towing it around. Um, this to me has always been the scariest part. Uh, we we want to make sure that this vessel does not sink as we're towing it around. Um, and a lot of times it's hard to determine what made a vessel sink. So just because we got the water pumped out doesn't always mean the water is not going to come back in. So this is always the scariest part for me. Uh, sometimes we do ride on board with it. Sometimes we don't. In this particular situation, we've got a generator on board. We've got an electrical pump on board. That way, if water does come in, it can start um, pumping it back out. But we're going to go ahead and get this thing on a trailer, take it up to the boat shop, and see if we can figure out exactly uh, what this or what made this vessel go down. So as you can see, guys, boat's out of the water. Uh, we actually think we figured out where the water was coming in at. Um, a lot of you guys ask, what do we do at the end of a salvage job with vessels like this? Do we give them back to the owner? Do we send them to the insurance companies? Well, it just depends. On this particular one, the insurance company will have to send out an adjuster uh, to see what it's worth, what it costs to repair, things like that. Currently, we're gonna be storing it up here at the boat shop. You got Skyline Marine here. I don't know if you can see behind my truck. A lot of boats up here, but that's what we do with them. A lot of times we'll bring them up here. This is our closest repair facility here, and a lot of people wanna get it done here. So now it's just kind of in limbo. We're going to wait and see what the insurance company does with it. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. Uh, if you got any questions on salvage work, let me know. Like I said, our salvage videos are going to start slacking off a little bit because we are going to be part of season three of Deepwater Salvage. And we got to save some of those and some of that film for that. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you call us on, or follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.